Hey everybody, Brad Clark here for Rigging Dojo. We're going to do a, um, kind of a grab bag of rig tips today. And um, we'll cover some constraint tips, um, a few new bugs, and a couple other things, just uh, some handy preferences and settings inside of Maya. So let's get going. Alright, so first up, let's discuss um, constraints and uh, a couple things about them that maybe you know or aren't aware of yet and um, and some settings about Maya. So first of all, first of all if we're going to constrain something in Maya and um, I'm going to put the pivot point up here. If I'm going to constrain something in Maya um, by default maintain offsets off which is fine because a lot of times um, and I actually recommend that you leave it off when you're first trying to do rigging or you're you're dealing with Maya because if you see a jump happen um, like this then you know that the constraint worked and if you are trying to move, match things up and you don't want them to move um, and you see them move then you know something's wrong a pivot point is off or something is not aligned correctly so um, you know I kind of leave maintain offset off uh, but I want you to <coughs> Be aware of something inside of Maya. If you currently, by default, grab something that's constrained, um, and you set a keyframe for it, the constraint breaks. It no longer works. And um, you'll see that before we just have a blue blue indicator saying there's a constraint here. And as soon as you set a keyframe, now it turns green, and there's a new blend uh, blend value here set up and there's a pair blend node that actually is mixing the keyframe with the constraint. Um, and while this is really handy because you can then go ahead and keyframe your um, keyframe your object and mix these back and forth with the um, existing uh, animation, you can mix between the uh, keyframe and the um, what am I trying to say? <laughs> the the constraint, the the important part is though that it's now basically broken the rig. And um, if you're trying to set up a character and you accidentally keyframe it, um, and this is going on without you knowing it, um, it can really mess things up. So I'm going to show you where to change that so that you're aware of it first of all, and then we can talk about another setting in there for for a minute. Um, so if you go into preferences. Windows, Settings, Preferences, Preferences, and we go down here to Animation under Settings, and then go to Animation. Um, there's a Animation Blending option, so we can turn that to Never Blend with Existing Connections. Alright, so now if we um, have a new object, actually I'm just going to get a new one. and I constrain it and we set a keyframe. You'll see that scale gets keyframed but we're not adding any other connections, there's no other values and we haven't basically broken the constraint. Okay, so let's go back one more time and we'll look at one other thing inside the constraint option box. Um, so the other part of the way constraints work in Maya is when you constrain something and you set the weight to zero, it doesn't actually do anything. It just stays put. Um, so if I constrain this ball, and then we go down to the weight for the constraint, um, it, it's not going to go back to where it came from originally. It's not going to. Uh, it's not going to blend smoothly. Um, so if I move this object here and then we go back and uh, update the weight, you're going to see it just jump. Um, the only way to get it to be smooth is to have another target. So you have to constrain it between multiple points for it to work. So that's kind of less than handy. So let's go back. Uh, there is a way to con um, put a constraint on an animation layer. And uh, by default, it doesn't let you create them from here. So you just simply need to go create a new layer and call this, uh, I'm going to name it con. And uh, if you have the dialog box up, it doesn't refresh. So we just go back in and go back to our options. 
And now there's a new layer that you can apply the constraint to. Once I pick targets. Okay, so now what's cool about this is the layer itself will let you blend back to its original location. So if you're trying to set up a very simple, um, you know, pick up a prop and put it down type of action, um, or, you know, you want to have a constraint follow multiple objects and then you can fade them out. And, uh, you know, there's some other cool stuff you can do with these. Um, you can mute your constraints without having to go in and change things. You can kind of preview the animation with them on and off. You can solo it. Um, and you can mix the layers together. Uh, so just you know, be aware that that's an option inside the constraint, and you you just simply have to set up the animation layer first. Okay, so that's that setting. Now, um, since we're talking about animation layers, there's something with HIK rigs that um, by default, and and this I don't have him in there, but uh, when you want to assign um, work with mocap or use the HIK solver you have to uh, set the, con the quaternions to, um, by default the animation happens in quaternion, and you have to set it to Euler curves for the animation layers to work. Well, it's not obvious inside of Maya where to do that, and it, it's kind of a pain if you're doing it each time. Um, so again, we'll go back to our animation preferences, and we'll go to animation, and under rotation interpolation, there's an option specifically for HIK. So we'll switch it from quaternion to independent Euler to match just like our existing keyframes. And we'll save that. And now you're good to go. You can add it to a constraint. You can keyframe it. The, the rig will interpolate just like a regular keyframe rig. And your HIK system will be much more functional inside of Maya. All right, so that was those settings. Now. Um, we're going to kind of talk about selection and a couple other other tricks inside of here. So, uh, usually, Max and and Softimage both have the ability to remember what was selected between vertice and uh, polygon, and Maya actually has this ability also. So, if you let's see, we can cycle our background color here, Alt B. Um, and you can see that when I switch between faces and vertices now, or vertex, it's going to remember. And the setting for this is not named very well at all. And there are a few little bugs with it if you're using it um, with the other uh, with uh, skinning or other tools. But just be aware that it's in here. Under preferences, um, we'll go down to selection, and uh, it's named one of the worst names that I could think of. It's this guy right here, select selection type effects act, active. I don't under, I don't know what that means, <laughs> but in uh, normal terms, turning it on allows Maya to remember on polygon objects the previous selected component. So if you're in here picking UVs and you switch to faces and then you want to go back and grow and you want to go back to your UVs, Uh, should uh, oh maybe because I um, did a conversion yeah so if you just simply switch between verts and faces it'll remember so there you go that's how to do that it's handy for modeling and uh, it's handy for other things although skinning it has a problem with the component editor um, so you may not want it all the time for example if I grab these uh, verts and then I click on a bone, it deselects the verts, and now I've lost my uh, setting. So, you know, good and bad. Okay, so let's talk about one more thing now that we're in the component editor. If um, a lot of times you might be working on a rig or doing something and you want to. Um, basically just nudge a value, uh, take some weights and scoot them one direction or the other. Well, if you have um, weights that you're happy with, but you just want to add maybe 2, 3% or 5% onto the existing number, there's not an easy way to do that. 
Um, there's a trick that you can use all over Maya, which is the ability to um, add to a um, text a number entry using um, a plus equals. If you use percentage, then it'll actually take the percent of this number and do 10% of that. So uh, it might help just to think in terms of, you know, I want to take these verts here and push them towards my shoulder joint 10%. So I'm going to uh, click up here, grab this, and control click in here and paste. Now it's going to scoot all my values towards my shoulder 10%. And it, it you know, it's a relative percentage, so it, it moves them, you know, it takes all their weighting as they exist and, and nudges them towards that other value. Uh, now, there are plenty of other tools and, and some nice skinning tools that let you do similar things, but um, it's nice if you're just inside of the inside of the component editor and you know you just you know you just want to scoot something ten percent then or twenty percent or or fifty percent more um, you can do it percentage instead of doing uh, plus plus equals. Uh, shift there we go plus equals and then just saying 10 it, you know it's gonna you have to think in point increments and you know how do you get you, you add 10 to 0 0.12 it's just it's just hard to think about so if you do percentage that's a nice nice way to um, up the values there so that's um, dealing with selection we've covered constraints we've covered um, how to get the HIK curves preferences set up and uh, we've talked about plus equals percentages, and um, I think that's about it. Actually, there's one more, and this is to do with the recent bug um, that we uncovered with Weight Hammer. So, um, currently, Weight Hammer on a mesh that is not using maintain max influences uh, will be fine. If you have max influences turned on, though, um, weight hammer starts to do some weird things like shoot vertices off into space so uh, if you basically go in and set the weight um, that we think the bug is that if a vert is already influenced by four max influences it's already at the max number of influences weight hammer kind of freaks out on it so um, one of the things you can do is, is uh, basically prune the values or set the weight to one and then weight hammer it and it seems to work better. Um, so you know if you just add your own script scripted tool in there to do the weight hammer um, I just simply went in and put a prune a prune prune weight value before the um, prune skin cluster so I'm just pruning the, the verts down before I weight hammer and that seemed to work to fix up most of the problems um, it won't always work for you but at least you know you can now work around the current weight hammer bug if you're limited to um, you know wanting to do a game character